Lock in the draft. What's going on? It's your boy 3K. Uh, I need to get on this YouTube stuff more often. I will work on that, but I wanted to talk about 10 names today of guys that I think could really have an interesting 2012 season, elevate their stock beyond what I had them going at in my mock draft, the three round mock draft. If you haven't gotten a chance to check it out, you can go look in the archives. Um, I think it was a couple weeks ago, but 10 names that I'm going to throw out of guys that I don't think are maybe receiving a level of hype that they might be a year out from now, or I guess less than a year out from now. We'll start with quarterback, uh, TCU quarterback, Casey Pahal, really interesting prospect. I, I really like what he, what he showed off in 2011. The problem is the consistency. If you go back and look at that Boise game, you're looking at somebody who is NFL ready. You're looking at, you know, a serious franchise QB prospect, but that was the Boise State game, the kind of games that bookended that on both sides. Just, the consistency just wasn't there. And when you've got a prospect like Josh Boyce, you really expect them to be able to do something more than that. So that's a quarterback I'm going to be looking at in 2012, really specifically to see if he can elevate his game to the next level. Um, at running back, I'm going to stay in Texas, but I'm going to go with Christine Michael down at Texas A&M. Now, he's gone off the radar a bit because of some injuries, and obviously he fell behind Cyrus Gray on the depth chart, but really athletic, great top end speed. Certainly somebody that if he's productive enough with the tackles that they have, Matthews and Jokel at uh, Texas A&M, he's somebody I could see making a real big jump. Uh, we'll stay on the offensive line from North Carolina. I really like John Cooper. I've liked him for years. I kind of hope he ends up with the Rams. Sorry, rest of the league, but he's somebody whose game I really, really like, and I think he translates to the NFL really well. Um, for offensive tackle, though, I'm going to go with Ode Ibushi out of Virginia. Virginia's got a nice history going now with offensive tackles between Eugene Monroe to Rickshaw Ferguson. So there's somebody to look out. Granted, they're in the ACC, which may not have the strongest of competition, but there's some decent guys there. You look at Florida State, if he can you know, come out there on that kind of platform and have a big game, he's somebody that I think could be really, really useful. Speaking of Florida State, my defensive end to keep an eye on, not Brandon Jenkins, it's Bjorn Werner. Really talented guy, came over late uh, in, in terms of the sport, but incredibly athletic kind of a Chris Long type game uh, and, and working in that defense he's somebody that I could really see having a big 2012 to elevate his stock to become a centerpiece of that defense where people are saying look this is the guy um, I'm gonna stay in Florida for the my other defensive lineman that's Sharif Floyd from Florida now Florida's got some injury concerns along that line that they're having to deal with Dominique Easley um, you got Ronald Powell uh, both ACL issues so Sharif's kind of the centerpiece now moving forward along with Omar Hunter. For the linebacker, I've got Xavier Gooden from Missouri. Really interesting guy that came on late, had some really strong games down the stretch, something to build on going into 2012. And if he can, he's going to be somebody like Sean Weatherspoon a couple years ago coming out of Missouri at outside linebacker that people are going to take note of. Uh, I guess you could call him an outside linebacker because he's moved there, but maybe as a hybrid kind of just athletic defender, somebody that I'm really interested to see what happens in 2012 with him is Kenny Tate at Maryland. Maybe the only guy that Randy Edsel hasn't pushed out of the program yet, but surprisingly, because Kenny Tate moved to outside linebacker from safety going into the 2011 season, it wasn't a perfect season for him. He maybe isn't the best fit there at the NFL, but really athletic guy. He's going to make it to the next level. He's got the talent. It's a question of fit, how much comfort he gets at outside linebacker going into the season. If it's there, I can see him really having a big jump in terms of his stock. Maybe after a couple of weeks, he moves back to safety. We'll just have to see. It's Maryland football. You never know uh, with those uniforms. <laughs> Additionally, a cornerback, I'm going to go back to Florida State. Greg Reed, he doesn't have great size. I mean, let's be honest, he's, he's small. But with his game, I think you have the opportunity to maybe find a guy that's not going to be your six foot one, 200 pounder at cornerback, a Patrick Peterson type, uh, you know, Darrell Rivas, but maybe a smaller guy that can complement and play a lot of key zone positions, uh, or even in man, but, but not the kind of physicality of the man that you see a lot of times in, the, let's say, the AFC. But you can work him in. I think with his athleticism, he may be somebody whose 2012 season sees a big jump in his stock. And my last guy that I've got at strong safety is a late bloomer. I mean, let's be honest about it. That's Jawanza Starling at Southern Cal. They're going into the biggest season they've had, what, in four or five years now that all the sanctions are lifted. Um, because unlike North Carolina, who's not going to get a bowl game since I talked about Cooper earlier, this is USC's chance to really put itself back on the map. The recruiting's been there. The talent's been there. But with the opportunity to now go into a season with BCS implications on the line, it's going to be interesting for guys at the back like TJ McDonald, Jawanza Starling, that entire offense with Matt Barkley at the helm. They've got a real chance to have a special season there. And I think Starling is a late bloomer, a guy who really came on at the end of last season um, at the strong safety position. If he can... Uh, complement T.J. McDonald's uh, pass defense styles, 
the, he's somebody I could see coming almost out of nowhere to really elevate his game to be somebody that people are talking about going into day one and early day two of the 2013 NFL draft. So those are my 10 names because I just did something with my voice and I wasn't prepared for it. But you weren't prepared for this YouTube video and we got through it anyway. So hit it up in the comments. Who do you think is not on the radar right now that will be in a couple months? What names do you expect maybe building off a strong 2011 that are going to come out and really have a strong 2012? What kind of uh, prospects should we be looking at that for a year or two or maybe even at this point we just don't know that much about but that you know from whatever team you follow, whatever region, whatever conference you're kind of paying attention to that really they're set up for a big 2012 and somebody that we may be talking about early on in the 2013 draft. Have it out. Subscribe to us on YouTube. There's going to be more coming down. Stick with us and mocking the draft because we got the best draft coverage on the internet. We out.